<laughs> so let me just do this as a um, kind of review, recap, or I guess an argument why you shouldn't forget standard strategy problem solving even now when we are starting to introduce additional tools for your problem solving toolbox. So in this question, they say a sled plus a passenger has some total mass. Let me just call that M is pulled some distance delta x across the snow. Uh, okay, there must be friction force at a constant velocity. Okay, that's probably meaningful. By a force, oh, directed some degree above the horizontal. All right, so um, so the question is asking about work done. And if you think about definition of work as that product of a force with a displacement or, um, or if you have the, uh, or if you <laughs> want to uh, express what this that product means, the magnitudes of the vectors times cosine of the angle between them. So in doing this calculation, you're going to need a force. And in terms of apply the force, you might feel like, oh, I know that force. I, um, wait, I don't know that force. They didn't give me the force. So, okay, I don't know the force. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> and when they ask you for the work of friction, I also don't know the friction. And, oh, you know what? I think I can answer part to C actually, um, calculate the total work. It, this is something you can actually cal calculate right now, um, but maybe I'll leave that for that later. Um, so actually, you don't know the first. It's, and I think that realization should lead you to, okay, I need to use a standard strategy. I need to figure out the forces. Then I can apply the definition of work. So let me start out with the standard strategy. Step number one, I need to draw a free body diagram. So... I have, I'm going to tra treat the sled plus passenger as one object. And I'm going to say that that one object has mass of M. And let me just uh, think through all the forces. Um, there ought to be gravity on it, but the sled doesn't accelerate downward because of the upward normal force. Um, and uh, it said it's being pulled. Yeah, so I need to, illustrate the applied force. I have uh, some force applied that's being applied at some angle theta above the horizontal. Um, and, uh, and, and since they gave us the friction uh, coefficient, uh, kinetic friction coefficient, I should assume that there is a kinetic friction force and that must be pointed the other way, um, kinetic friction. Okay, and as always, I'm asking myself the question, did I draw all the forces? And it feels to me that way. And uh, one of the things I need to check is, what is the acceleration? And they say constant velocity. So that's a, a way of telling me that acceleration is zero. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So it, the way, all, with all the forces I've drawn, I'm pretty sure I can make acceleration zero. So I think I'm good. I accounted for all the forces from things touching the sled and it, that should be complete. Okay, that's step number two. I need to choose my coordinate axis. And I think with the acceleration being zero, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Use a straight axis. That also means I only have to break down one force, apply the force with this X component and the Y component. Oh, and that's my triangle with angle theta. <laughs> so my Y component is gonna be apply the force times the sine theta. My X component is gonna be apply the force cosine theta. But you know, don't get into the habit of always associating these with the Y and X. Um, you always have to check the triangle, you know, use the Sokatoa. Um, <laughs> so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and all that. Um, okay, that's step number, so I did step number two and three, uh, breaking down forces into components. And finally, I'm ready to do step number four, writing down my Newton's second law equation. So, uh, so let's write it down. My, I need the two equations, one for the x direction, one for the y direction. 
So my net force in the x direction is going to be x component of apply the force minus the, the friction force. Uh, F applied cosine theta minus the kinetic friction force. I think that's all. That's equal to zero because zero acceleration. Net force in the y direction is going to be I have normal force uh, plus the y component of applied force times the sine theta. And then I have gravity pulling it down minus mg. And that's going to be zero again because vertically it's not accelerating either. So before I um, close off my list of equations, I should check how many unknowns I have. I have applied the force, that's an unknown. And I don't have, I have friction force, that's also an unknown. And I have normal force, that's also an unknown. So I have three unknowns, two equations. I need one more equation and hopefully it doesn't take you too long to realize, oh, I need to express my friction force in terms of my coefficient of friction and the normal force. Uh, so with the kinetic friction, it's pretty simple. It, it's just the equality. You don't have to <laughs> you know, worry about the things I tell you to worry about with the static friction. So, okay, I have three equations, three unknowns. I should be able to solve it. So I think what I'm going to do is let me eliminate normal forces. Then I don't have to worry about normal force ever in uh, any, the remainder of the problem solving. So I think I'm going to solve this for normal force. N is equal to friction divided by mu k. Plug that in here. That gives me uh, friction force divided by mu k plus apply the force sine theta minus mg is equal to zero. By the way, I'm doing this a bit of an unusual order. Normally, uh, we eliminate friction force, but in this question, we actually want to know the amount of friction force. So, uh, so let, let's keep it in. I have a system of two equations, one and two, involving two unknowns, and I should have solved for both of them. Uh, let me uh, let me solve for friction. Yeah, let me s actually let me <laughs> do it this way. I'm going to solve equation one for the applied force. Um, so doing that, I get one prime, which is gonna be applied force is the kinetic friction divided by cosine theta. I'm going to reserve this for later. And then I'm going to use this to eliminate, apply the first from my second equation, solve that for friction force. So my two prime after plugging in one prime is going to be friction divided by mu k plus, um, now I plug this in, fk divided by cosine theta times sine theta, it's going to be times tangent theta minus mg is equal to zero. And I can collect like terms here. So this is a friction force times one over mu k plus tangent theta minus mg. And I can solve for friction force here. My friction force is, uh, uh, all this is equal to zero, <laughs> mg divided by tangent theta. I, just swapping the word, I don't like this coming first, <laughs> plus one over mu k. Okay, I'm done. Um, so that'll give me the friction force. And um, and as I calculate the work of friction force, you have to be careful here. Wait, do I have to be careful here? You know what? I don't have to be careful here for the friction force. <laughs> uh, because the displacement of the delta x, it's horizontal. So friction force, so with the apply the force, I would have had to be careful because I have to make sure I include this cosine theta. But with the friction, um, it's already directly opposite. So I'm going to have to remember the minus sign. But other than that, I can simply have this expression times delta x or times 40 meters. And that will give me the exactly the answer I'm looking for. So let me do that in a calculator and plug in the answer to make sure I got it right. Uh, let's do mg, uh, 43 kilogram times g, 9.8, divided by tangent theta, so 25 tangent um, plus 
1 divided by 0 0.23. Okay, that's the uh, ratio. And then I'm going to multiply that by 14 meters. Is it equal to uh, 1225 uh, joule? So minus 1225 joule. Okay, let's plug it in and let's hope it's correct. Yeah. And now that I've got this answer, I can actually answer the remainder without plugging in any more numbers. The work done by apply the first, I know it's 1225. And uh, I could go back and do the calculation that I promised I would. I could plug in this uh, friction force in here and then go through this work calculation. Oh, cosine theta will cancel. Oh, in fact, there you see um, basically the portion of the applied force that's doing work is going to be the same as the uh, friction force. So <laughs> that's another way to get 1225. And the way I got it is I already, before doing all the calculations, I knew the answer for total work was zero joules. That's the work kinetic energy theorem. If it's moving at a constant velocity, then kinetic change of kinetic energy is zero. That means the net work done must be zero. So th this is an answer that you can get from the reading the question and remembering work kinetic energy theorem from the start. So, um, so yeah, th that should be it. And um, so this is really a, the hardest part of this question is doing that force analysis and figuring out the friction force or figuring out the applied force, figuring out the forces so that you can use that force to calculate the work. Once you know the force, calculating work done is pretty simple.